welcome to the Craft House Magic Setter Tutorials. My name's Ellie and I'm going to talk to you today about how to actually get your socks to fit properly. So lots of people ask me when they first start knitting socks, how many stitches do I cast on and what needle size do I use? Well it really does depend on what yarn you're using and also your gauge that you're knitting with. So these are West Yorkshire Spinners and Opal yarns. And I find that these have a very similar thickness when in terms of four ply. However, if you look at something like Knit Picks Felici, I find this actually comes up a little bit thicker than the four ply of the other ones I showed you. So it's best to get one of the yarns that you think you might knit a couple of pairs of socks with just to try out, and then you can adjust your gauge afterwards. So if you're going to start doing a top down sock what you could do is start knitting the sock to actually count your gauge and then if it's correct you can carry on knitting it um, and if it's not you can then rip back and start again but it, if it does actually come up to the right gauge it saves you from having to knit a separate gauge swatch so once you've knit um, a certain amount I'd take um, the measurement from quite a bit above where you've still got your stitches on the needles so you can work out how many stitches per inch. If you obviously you don't want to be measuring it when it's on a sock block like here um, I'd lay it nice and flat on the surface of the table and don't stretch it out too much just sort of pat it out flat and count how many stitches you've got per inch. What you could do is measure it over two or three inches and then calculate how many stitches per inch that you have. So, once you've got this me measurement, you can do these um, calculations. So, you then want to take the circumference of your leg around the top of your leg, because this is where you're going to be knitting the first part of your sock. And then you obviously want your measurement stitches per inch. And then you can do these calculations. So you take the leg circumference minus 1.5 inches. Some, some people use 2 inches as well. So anything 1.5, 2 inches um, of negative ease, that's what you want. Because you don't want your sock to fall down. You want it to have negative ease so it's quite tight on your foot. Not too tight, of course, but so that it doesn't fall down. And this should give you the circumference of the sock you need to knit. Then you multiply your stitches per inch by the sock circumference. And this should give you the number of stitches you need to cast on your sock. So what I quite often suggest to people is that when you're casting on your swatch, if you cast on 60 stitches on 25 millimeter needles, that you can then adjust um, your stitch count accordingly if it's incorrect and then if you are correct you can keep on knitting them. So that's how you do a top down. So if you're doing a toe up sock you can actually try the sock on as you go to see whether it's large enough um, if you do them on magic loop. Um, I've done a separate tutorial how to do a toe-up sock. I shall link this in the box below if you'd like to have a look at that. Um, but you can take the same calculations as I did for doing the top down, as in you measure the circumference and then do the calculation um, to work out how many stitches you need to increase when you're doing from the toe up. So you'd keep increasing to that amount and then you choose to do whichever heel you'd like. Some people may have a different measurement on this part of the leg as to this part. So it's good uh, practice to just measure these two parts so you, you don't actually end up knitting the sock all the same stitches and then the top being a little bit tight compared to the bottom. So make sure you have the measurement for your foot area and stick to that and then change your stitch count to whatever measurement that you need for the top half of your sock. So. What is also important is that you take into account whether you've got a high instep or a regular instep. I know from experience that I've got quite a high instep in my foot, which just means it's quite thick between your ankle and, well, not your ankle, but the bottom of your foot and where your foot meets your leg here. Uh, if this is quite large, you might want to stick to doing a heel flap and gusset sort of technique. 
Um, and what's quite good is that what you can do is when you're doing your heel flap, lots of patterns suggest doing 16 repeats or 32 row, rows of this heel section. But what I sometimes like to do is do about 18 to give you a little bit more space here. I'm afraid it's just a little bit of trial and error um, with working out what heel works best for you. But if you know you, you have a high instep, this is quite good just to do an extra few rows um, to get it to fit. You could always do 20 if you've got a really, really high instep. This is a short row heel. Um, I've actually gone through something like this sort of short row heel in my tutorial of how to do the sock toe up. Um, what you can do is increase stitches just before the short row heel and decrease them just after just to give you a little bit more room here. Um, but if you have got a very high end step it's better to do the heel flap and gusset method. So if you're doing pattern socks like I am doing the evergreen socks here um, this pattern has a lacy section at the top and I find that lace is actually looser than the plain stockinette section. I don't know if you can really see it here. This section here is stockinette and it's slightly skinnier than this wider um, lacy section which is actually the same stitch count. So if you are doing a lace pattern you can get away with working less stitches. This is an example of a toe-up sock that I'm knitting. This is actually the Sugar Plum Fairy Socks by uh, Ruth McKeon. Um, and this pattern is actually ribbed so it looks a little bit skinnier than it is. But you can actually try this on, on your foot as you're knitting it. So, that's just a little summary of how to get your socks to fit properly. If you have any questions, just pop them in the uh, questions thread down below. And I hope you enjoy knitting your socks. Bye!